My name is Gary Miller. I'm the technical director of the Ontario Soccer Association and just started uh, this past April 2015. I had been with the OSA in previous years, uh, 1983 to 1990 and then 1992 to 94. And then in 1996 we formed Bryce International and we started as a coach education program and then in 1998 we started the first academy program which was an indoor training program for elite male and female athletes. Three years ago I, I was uh, approached to get involved with TAC which was the OSA's Technical Advisory Council. I got involved with redesigning some of the programs that OSA was running and my role in TAC was to advise and give direction to the OSA and then there was a small group of us that designed OPDL. OPDL is a standard-based league that we uh, wanted to be involved in. It's creating a culture and an environment within the uh, community clubs that allows for high performance. So it brings up the younger players from uh, 12 years old into the, a more professional um, standard league. Realistically, here the biggest thing has been a culture and an environment and a mentality. The athleticism has always been there but the technical ability, the tactical knowledge, that hunger to actually learn and get better, this has created that. So it's clubs that are involved right now. It's been a lot of change and development for those clubs to move from being a community club to being an OPDL license holder because of the standards that have been set that they must reach. That you have legitimate coaching, legitimate curriculum, standards on the number of practices, what's expected during competition. When we first got here and there was no OPDL, it was practicing maybe once, twice a week. Now they're practicing three, four times a week, but more importantly, they want to be practicing. They want to play soccer. There is a pathway. The league itself offers, again, a standard for the whole of the province to work together, um, to stay within the pyramid for its player development, but also coaching development. These are all requirements to professionalize the movement and development of young players and, and into a high performance stream. And they now actually have a pathway that didn't exist before. Um, people miraculously made a provincial team or a national team, whereas now we actually know how to get there. Well, it's, al it's allowed us to see where what we were doing well, what we weren't doing well, and look at the criteria that the OSA has developed so that we could administrate our programs that would not only help the OPDL players in the ages of 13 and 14, but let it progress all the way down to the entry level when kids are first coming into the sport. So they have to be primed and developed in those U8 to U12 years so that the overall foundation of the OPDL is going to be much stronger on the male and female side. Having Gary just come on board as the OSA Tech Director has been great in the sense that he's providing leadership, communication and making sure that he's explaining to us what the vision is that they're trying to establish going forward. I guess I was delighted when Gary got the job. Um, it's actually somebody that knows Ontario soccer. It's somebody from in-house that's been around, that knows the ins and outs, that helped create the whole program in the first place. Now, that's the biggest thing about being involved with Gary in the OSA right now, is that we're going in the right direction. Now, we might be on the left side of the path, the right side, we might even be slow, some of us might be even faster than others, but we're all moving in the, in the right direction. But I see the future as clubs and academies within the OPDL driving this forward. So we're working together to improve the OPDL and move it forward so that everybody buys in and they understand what the long-term vision is of high performance development in the province and that it's planned rather than it's just by chance as it was years ago.